Well, I've done a couple of board rescues, but never have I rescued someone on a floating kangaroo. The weather's closing in and things are going pear-shaped. Two women on coloured blow-up toys have already been warned about staying between the flags. Now it's too late for warnings. The first woman, clinging to an inflatable lemon, is held up by a Thanks, brother! A friend riding an inflatable tomato is in much more serious trouble. That girl with the red rig, she was flying in the in the in the in the rape like a river like I need an engine to get there. <laughs> Thank you! I told you a hundred times! You had to take off the ring, like it's dangerous. Like I, I had to take you in. Like you had to leave the ring. Yeah, she didn't want it. She kept holding, holding the ring. I had to force her. Get up! Get up! Get up! Finally, the woman keeps up as well. Yeah, it was a bit of a hot moment. The surf was pretty powerful. I had to be quick and near the rocks. laughing with her friend and then um, just thinking oh wow like you were close to to drown you know like people react differently when they get rescued some people laugh some people cry some people say thank you some people just walk away rescued by a surfer Leia's friend retrieved the inflatable tomato but why is it so important you have tea yes I understand at the end why she was laughing with her friends. This girl didn't want to lose her ring because she had attached a key of a locker where all her valuable were kept. What is your name? No, Mario, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I never forget this day. <laughs> never. Boogie boards can pose big problems. People who can't swim. People who would drown in a bathtub are allowed to go out there on these plastic little things with Spider-Man pictures on them and all that. And they cost 12 bucks and they wouldn't save a cockroach. Many beginners battle to just stay on. Lifeguards call this boogie board wrestling. Boogie board wrestlers, it's actually a sport. It's almost going to catch up to the UFC. It's one of the biggest sports worldwide. The rules are simple. You have to put the arm rope on your ankle and you've got to jump in the rip and just go for it. You and the bodyboard, mono a mono. Extra points if they're covered in Hawaiian Tropic coconut oil. The degree of difficulty goes from like a, a five to a ten. <laughs> it's hilarious. You see a grown man walk into the ocean holding a bodyboard and he comes out completely defeated by a piece of foam. The bodyboard's just beat this bloke and he's swimming away from it. The bodyboard's just chasing him. Like all sports, the ref steps in when someone's about to get hurt. But bodyboard wrestling can be a lethal sport. 
He looks like he can't paddle whatsoever, but then as soon as he loses the board, he panics. Yeah, I'm going to have to go, eh? Hey? He's struggling, Jess. Yeah, you're going to have to go for sure, eh? Hey? A boogie boarder is swept out in a rip 100 metres from shore. Beardy takes an educated guess. You can't swim, can you? No. No. Give it to me. Trusting a flimsy bit of foam could have proved fatal. Another victim of boogie board wrestling. And the winner, the boogie board. Oh, yeah, the boogie board beat you. I'm better on snowboard, quand même. I prefer the Alpes. Plus simple. Au pire, les avalanches, on les connaît. Les vagues, c'est compliqué quand même. If you see a, a fully grown man enter the water in a life jacket near a rip, the alarm bells start ringing. He's not going to drown. <laughs> That's the best bit. He's definitely not going to drown, but he just won't make it in. The rip was pretty strong, and before you know it, he was just gone. Blissfully unaware of the commotion he's causing, Ivan, from China, drifts 200 metres offshore. I've got a life jacket just out in front of me to the left. You can see him. Yeah, we've got him, Chapo. He's cruising. <laughs> I reckon he's just fallen off one of the p and cruise ships. It's meant to keep him safe. Oh, no way! But Ivan's life vest has landed him in very deep water. He's all right, I might have to go get him soon. You might be lucky. Well, Otherwise, he's going to be New Zealand. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, Bondi Central, he's just cruising, isn't he? He sure does. He's having the time of his life. He is, there. he actually I is. I don't think he knows how much danger he's really in. Yeah, he's having the time of his life. 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 Oh, my name is Ivan. Where are you from, mate? I'm from China. China? Yeah. Well, welcome to Bondi. Yeah. How was your swim? Oh, uh, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you why, why did you want to wear the life jacket today? Uh, just help me to stay in the water for longer time. Ah, it's very clever. Did you notice how fast you went? Really? You were, did you see how far out you were? Oh, I didn't see. Yeah, you were really far out. I wish more people would wear them sometimes. It would make our job a lot easier. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. It really would. <laughs> 400 metres around the corner, I think. 400 metres around the corner. A man is in distress and calling for assistance. Yeah. Lifeguards and volunteer lifesavers search for his boat somewhere off Bondi's cliffs. There he is, I got him. The tiny boat is drifting almost a kilometre out to sea. Central to jet ski. Boys, have you located the vessel? Yeah, jet ski to Bondo Central. Vessel located. Um, his motor has broken down. Um, we're just devising a plan of attack from here. Okay, thanks, guys. I'll let Surf come now. The man has taken on the might of the ocean in a homemade boat no bigger than a dinghy. He's got a broken engine, but no oars and no radio. At least he has a life jacket. Just skip that into the back. Ben and Mouse secure the stricken vessel before it heads further out to sea. We're just beginning the task of towing this boat back into North Bondi. The patient is on the duck. He's going to be dropped in there. Copy that, Ben. Before it takes on more water, the unconventional craft makes dry land. Ben and Mouse give the skipper a lift back to the beach. Safely ashore, Captain Anthony reveals the mystery behind his dramatic New Year voyage, which began 12 hours earlier. Right, you're only going out here from last night. Oh, it was still yeah. in June. You got up? Yeah. Did you oh, go yeah. out last night? I went out last night. Where'd you go? I was um, on the beach, just across from Rose Bay, got the perfect view. Perfect. On was, the boat? Out on the boat? Yeah, so one o'clock I was crashed out, got up and was like, oh, I'm going to treat myself. Brand new boat, I'm going to take it out. <laughs> But what's the story behind the unusual vessel, the SS Good Times? Where'd you get the boat from? So I got it off eBay. Two dollars and fifty-five cents. Two dollars and fifty-five cents. That's my pride and joy. Yeah. Uh, except for my son. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lucky made it back in to see his yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Just me yelling and screaming at the girls up in the mountains. I don't know. What oh, really? Happened. So you didn't radio? No, no. How did we get contact? My mobile was wet. I had no mobile. <laughs> Um, hey, I, I just totally lucky, forgot eh? about my flares. A trawler came to me and yeah. uh, gave me a can of Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of a kind, mate. One of a kind. Yeah. It's the second year of Blow Up Bondi. Who knows what it all means, but it looks like fun with a strong Aussie flavour. Yeah, guys, just to let you know, there's a big group of um, backpackers going out to the point to paddle in all their lilos. Just keep an eye on them, because a couple of them are uh, pissed. But I've had a word to them, time to be careful. Over. Right out, North Cliff. The aim is to head for shore. At the moment, they're making good progress towards New Zealand. Well, I've done a couple of board rescues, but never have I rescued someone on a floating kangaroo. The weather's closing in and things are going pear-shaped. Oh. Yates is going to the rescue. Fortunately, everyone's made it to shore safely, even the marsupials. Nicola's got little to celebrate. Then, Nicola spots a woman floating out to sea. The lady with the pink thong was sitting there going out to sea, and she had her phone in her hand. I was like, are you all right? She goes, um, I think I need some help. Hold on to it. And she's kicking there, she's like got her iPhone wrapped in one of those waterproof cases, just sitting there on her pink thong, floating out to sea. Oh, classic. If only Nicola had the woman's phone number. The message might have made it through. 